Hi, everybody. We're just going to shimmy on into the screen here a little bit. So <laughs> I think we're in. Hey, everyone. So my name's Eric. I'm here with Ian Morse and Heather Davidson. We're all part of the Altus Assessments team. We're super thrilled to be discussing the logistics of Casper, how it works, and what you can expect during the test, as well as how best to prepare, of course. Um, so we'll go around the table briefly just to introduce ourselves. Um, so again, I'm Eric. Um, I connect primarily with admissions teams in Canada who have decided to adopt Casper as part of their process. So hey everyone, I'm Heather and I sit on the research team here at Altus Assessments. So it's my job to make sure that the test is doing what it's supposed to do. So measuring real reliable differences between applicants. And I'm Ian, I'm on the applicant support team. I'll be answering any questions you guys have uh, before the test, during the test and afterwards, just to make sure everything runs smoothly. Awesome folks. So all the information we're going to be covering today can be found on our website. That's takecasper.com. Um, but we're hoping that this webinar will answer all of your questions about Casper and of course package most of the important bits into one spot for you. Our goal for this webinar is for you as a Casper applicant to come out feeling self-assured for the upcoming admission cycle, have an understanding of Casper as well as the process behind it. Um, but most importantly, you know, we want you to have a positive testing experience. Um, so I'm just going to take a moment. I wanted you to make sure that you saw a couple humans behind the camera here, uh, but I'm just going to turn our webcam off so we can focus a little bit more on the presentation. All right. So this webinar is a presentation for current and prospective Casper applicants. So Ian, Heather, and I are going to be talking about the Canadian Undergraduate Health Sciences Casper test for nursing applicants. Um, we're likely not going to take the full hour. You'll have some time for lunch still. Um, and we're gonna be diving deepest into preparing for Casper as the last topic we cover today. So Ian will walk you through that. Um, we of course invite you to ask questions throughout the session, but please note we're not going to be responding live. We'll be posting the answers to those questions in the days following this webinar, along with a recording of today's session. We have members of our team monitoring incoming questions and we will get those answers back to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, last but not least, we'd love to learn from you. So along with any specific questions you have, Please provide us with any feedback about anything we're maybe not communicating well or something you couldn't find on our website. All right, so the main points that we're gonna to cover today are why programs have chosen Casper and which ones have made it a requirement, the logistics of Casper and what to expect when taking the, te the test, how Casper is rated, some of the research behind Casper as well as the validity, and last but certainly not least, how to actually prepare for your Casper test. So I'm going to hand this off to Heather, who's going to talk a little bit about admission requirements, where Casper fits in, and why programs have chosen to use Casper. Perfect. Thanks, Ian. Uh, we don't have too much time, so I'm going to dive right into why programs, like the nursing programs that you're applying to, have decided to use Casper in their admissions process. So undergraduate health sciences programs want to select students who are not only strong academically, but also have the personal and professional characteristics necessary to succeed in their chosen field. This means selecting students that have excellent communication and problem solving skills, empathy and motivation, as well as good grades. Academic metrics that are commonly used like your GPA only tell programs about one side of you. These measures don't capture the qualities that predict things like professionalism issues in practice, and many programs want a more holistic view of who their applicants are beyond their grades. Traditionally, programs have used tools like personal statements or essays, uh, reference letters, and interviews to assess for these kinds of characteristics, but these measures take a lot of work to, for schools to go through and administer, and they aren't perfect. These screening measures do not predict for future performance in people skills, they contribute to a lack of diversity and access in programs, and they often don't authentically or accurately represent who you are. Research has shown that reference letters and personal statements have little to no predictive value or reliability to tease apart the good from the bad applicants. Applicants will often try to tell admissions committees what they think they want to hear, rather than giving a picture of their true self, so they all tend to sound the same. They also can advantage students with connections and knowledge of the system. For example, applicants that come from family members who work in healthcare and things like that. Situational judgment tests like Casper, on the other hand, have been shown to predict for future performance, unlike personal statements and reference letters. Because they don't require any job specific knowledge and can be taken from anywhere, they help to widen access and improve diversity. 
In introducing a tool like Casper, programs are able to understand their applicants beyond just their book smarts. They're able to really dig in deeper, providing applicants with a platform to demonstrate their strengths in the competency areas outside of science and knowledge. This can be particularly important for the applicants who just meet the academic cutoffs. They can use Casper to boost their chances of proceeding to the next stage in the admissions process. Casper is a unique form of situational judgment test, or SJT, uh, which is a type of test commonly used in workplace hiring where you're presented with a scenario and asked how you would act. And it's specifically designed to help select the best possible candidates for health sciences programs. Situations are presented with videos for higher fidelity. What this means is that you're more immersed in the scenario than you would be if you just read a description of it on paper. The test is online and you can take it on your personal computer, meaning you don't need to travel to a testing center. This makes the test lower cost and gives wider access to all applicants across Canada. Casper scenarios are not based on specific workplace situations, concentrating on general people skills rather than procedural knowledge. So the test won't disadvantage applicants who haven't yet had a chance to work in a healthcare setting. The test asks how you would respond to the situations using a constructed response, in other words, an open typed format, rather than asking you to choose the best response from a list of options. Why you chose what to do is more important than what you choose to do, and there are no right or wrong answers. This helps us to really tease apart differences between applicants, unlike multiple choice tests where everyone's scores tend to pile up at the high end of the scale. Casper is designed to assess for 10 competencies valued by professional health sciences programs like nursing. Collaboration, motivation, communication, problem solving, empathy, professionalism, equity, resilience, ethics, and self-awareness. The content of each Casper test is unique, but the 12 scenarios are carefully selected to ensure that each of these 10 constructs is captured in every individual test instance. All right, folks, this is Eric again. I'm gonna jump back in. Um, so just quickly, um, currently over 60 programs in Canada and 200 worldwide are acquiring Casper for the 2019-2020 admission cycle. Um, so I believe in Canada, there are 21 nursing programs requiring Casper as part of their process this year. Um, there are always more coming on board. Um, and for a complete and updated list, check out takecasper.com. We're actually going to show you uh, where the dates and times are, as well as a list of the schools using Casper. Um, but I wanted to share with you this really quickly. Um, just you might be asking, okay, well, where does Casper fit into the admissions process? And I'll say this with a grain of salt in that every program is going to use a Casper score differently. They're going to use it at a different point in time as well. Uh, but typically at the undergraduate level, you're going to see a Casper score factor in early on in the application process. If there's any sort of second step, it tends to be applied before that second step or an interview if, if that's something that, uh, that a program requires. But you'll see it submitted along with GPA, uh, personal statements, reference letters, you know, around that, you know, again, that beginning part of the process. So let's talk a little bit more about the logistics of Casper. So a program will adopt Casper for their admission cycle, and then they're going to direct applicants to takecasper.com. Um, so once they do that, Altus Assessments takes over and runs the entire test. Um, so we verify applicant accounts, set the test dates you can schedule through us, we provide testing accommodations, and we administer and score the Casper test all through the account you create on takecasper.com. On the topic of accommodations, I definitely want to touch on this. If you need any sort of accommodation, so a scribe, extra time, closed captioning, connect with us at support at takecasper.com. And I'll say that again because you can use that for all sorts of questions. Support at takecasper.com. You can also use the chat bubble on your Casper account. You'll find that on the bottom right. Um, the contact us page is another tool you can use too. So you'll need to submit the accommodations request form, which is found in the accommodation section of our FAQs on the website. And we ask that you do that at least three weeks prior to your desired test date. Now, as an applicant, you'll be required to register for a Casper account, you'll schedule your own test, and you'll pay your test fee. So we know how expensive the application process can be. Applicants are asked to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars on fees, prep courses, application fees, travel fees. We've been there, we know how much it can be. Um, so we've done our best to make Casper as accessible as possible without creating a larger financial burden. So for the Canadian Undergraduate Health Sciences test, you're looking at a $40 base fee 
plus $10 per program to distribute your Casper score. So every time you want to send a Casper score to a program, it's $10. So when can I take Casper and who requires it? This is where you want to take a look at takecasper.com and you can browse all the test dates and times. Um, you can also register for your Casper account on our website. Take a look at that dates and fees tab that you see at kind of the top left there. Um, and I highly suggest you read through this, uh, this bit of information here. Um, most importantly, because it shares with you what you'll need to create an account. Government issued photo ID, valid email, working webcam, as well as a working microphone. Once you've read through this, I invite you to take a look at the Browse Test Dates and Times button that you see at the bottom of the screen. So you'll be then invited to select the country in which the program you're applying to resides in. Um, so for the majority of you today, if not all of you, that's going to be Canada. Um, and you can select your language, um, English or French. We'll stick to English today. However, there has been a French webinar and that will be available as well. Um, and then you'll select the program you're applying to. And again, the majority of you, if not all of you, will be selecting undergraduate nursing. From there, you'll see the name of the test that you'll need to take. So you'll see it there. It's CSP 10202, Canadian Undergraduate Health Sciences. So keep that in your mind. From there, you'll see a list of schools you're applying to. Once you select those schools, you'll see the last possible test date available for all those programs. So that's the last instance of Casper you can take to satisfy all the deadlines for all of your selected programs. You'll then see a chart that looks like this with every school that you've selected listed down. I mean, in this case, we've got just University of Alberta Nursing. And you see that under the school and program section, there are some notes specific to the program. So definitely take a look at that just so that you know everything you need to know before selecting your test. You'll see the admission cycle, it's always going to be 2019, 2020 during this cycle, of course. And then the big one, the test dates listed in Eastern time. Last but not least, well, two more, uh, two more items, the distribution deadline. So this is the last date you can send your score to a school. Um, note as well that if you have a score uh, and you've written the test already and you decide later on that you want to send that score, you can totally do that at any point before this distribution deadline. But do be mindful of that date. And then last but not least, the identifier requirements. So if a school has an associated ID, maybe it's a specific to a program ID, um, or it's an OUAC ID if you're applying to schools in Ontario, um, they may ask for it and you'll be, asked to you'll be asked to submit that when you register for your test. So a full list of schools participating in Casper and the available test dates can also be found in your Casper account when reserving a test. We have the link on the website you just saw, but head to account.takecasper.com and you can create that account. Again, photo ID, working webcam, working microphone, and a valid email will be what you need to register. So just as you did when browsing test dates and times, pick the country which you're applying to, the language as well, the programs that you'd like to send your score to, and, or sorry, the program rather, so in this case it'll be nursing, and then the school that you're applying to. You'll then be prompted for payment once you select all of your schools and enter any identifier information. Okay, great. So I think that was some important stuff, but let's talk a little bit more about how Casper works. So Heather's covered this, but I want to reiterate a little bit of it. Casper is an online video-based situational judgment test, or SJT, that screens for people skills. And those are those constructs that Heather listed off a little while ago. So you take the test on your own from a personal computer or laptop that has a working webcam and working audio. Um, so this is a strict requirement of Casper because we have sophisticated proctoring and security measures, some that are detectable, some that aren't, uh, to monitor applicants as they take the test. There are 12 scenarios. Scenarios are everyday situations that everybody can relate to. They don't require specific knowledge of the program or profession because we don't want to bias or advantage anybody. Of those 12 scenarios, eight are video-based, four are word-based, and they're delivered to you in random order. Following this scenario, you'll be asked three open-ended questions that relate to the scenario, and you'll have five minutes to respond to all three questions. After six of those sessions have passed, there's an optional 15-minute break. At this time, you're able to get up, stretch your legs, use the washroom, have a snack. Um, you actually don't even need to be in view of the webcam uh, for this 15-minute period. Um, you don't even have to take all 15 minutes if you don't want to. 
um, you can continue along with the test. But it's there if you want to catch your breath. So I'd like to take, to mo take a moment to show you what a video slide will look like. Um, so you'll see here, um, you'll be prompted with your role in the video. Um, so it shows here that you're a coworker for these two folks that we see. Um, and the video is going to be playing automatically after you see that. You're not gonna have the ability to pause, replay, or rewind the video. So it's very important to be focused. You'll want headphones in, um, and you'll wanna be locked in. Pay attention to the scenario for sure. Absolutely, you can take notes during the test on the, or on the details of the scenario, um, but don't bring in pre-written notes. You're not allowed to do that. Remember, you only have five minutes to respond to the three questions, so if you are taking notes, make sure you have enough time to type your replies. When the video is finished, you're automatically gonna be directed to the response page, which looks like this. You can see all three questions at once, so take some time to read them and plan your responses accordingly. So there isn't a right or wrong answer. These questions are totally open-ended. Reply however you see fit and demonstrate how you would respond to the previously presented scenario, as well as why you'd respond in that way. So this is gonna help show your unique perspective on the scenario. So for example, Ian and, I, Ian and I may choose to take the same action on a given scenario, but why we take that action may be totally different. So explain your motivation. I'll draw your attention to that circled countdown clock as well. Remember, five minutes to reply to all three questions. If you finish before the five minutes are complete, you can press the submit button to proceed to the next scenario. If you take the full five minutes, most applicants do, you'll be automatically directed to the next scenario and your responses are gonna, gonna be automatically saved. Uh, don't worry if you misspell a word, don't worry if you don't finish a sentence, none of that factors in. Our raters are trained to not have that factor in when scoring a response, so don't let that bother you as you move through the test. Finally, remember that orange chat bubble, it's always there. Um, if at any point during your test there are technical issues, reach out to our support team and they'll help you out. Great, thanks Eric. Uh, Heather again, back to talk about what happens after you write your CASPER test. So how your test is rated and how your score is distributed to the programs that you're applying to. So once you've completed all 12 sections of your CASPER test, your responses will be submitted to our CASPER raters to be scored. We have many raters from all over Canada with different backgrounds and life experiences. We want them to represent the patient population uh, and they're not just employees of Altus. Every response a rater sees is anonymized to avoid cultural, racial, and gender biases common with other assessment tools. Uh, raters don't know your grades, they don't know if you received a testing accommodation, and they can't see your responses to the other 11 scenarios. They're only rating you based on the typed response that you submitted for that single scenario. All CASPER raters are put through a rigorous training process. Uh, the raters are trained to disregard spelling and grammar, English proficiency, uh, the length of your response, and cut off or complete sentences like Eric mentioned. They know that applicants are under strict time constraints, so none of these factors should be considered when they assign you a score. Uh, it's very common for raters to see typos and cutoff sentences, so don't worry. They're trained to focus just on the content of responses and how they relate to those CASPER constructs that I talked about earlier. We really drive home the point to our raters that just because an applicant has written a significant amount of text doesn't necessarily mean it's a good response. And likewise, just because an applicant is given a short response doesn't necessarily mean it's a poor response. Uh, as I mentioned before, each CASPER test is rated using 12 independent raters who are scoring your CASPER responses. This means that your CASPER score is a result of 12 unique individual impressions. There's one rater per scenario, and no rater will see more than one response from any given applicant. In other words, instead of rating your test the whole way through from sections one to 12, each rater is focusing on rating one particular section for multiple different CASPER applicants. So for example, one rater might see a series of responses for just scenario three. Rating applicant responses for the same scenario over and over allows the rater to give a score for your response that is relative to your peers. This is important because it allows the programs that you're applying to to have a sense of how you're doing relative to your peers and the entire applicant pool. Prior to rating applicant responses, raters are assigned to a particular scenario and provided with relevant instructions background knowledge and theory, as well as some guiding questions about how the scenario uh, and the constructs it's probing for. 
So by giving programs information about you beyond your grades, CASPER aims to help widen access to groups that have traditionally been underrepresented in medicine and other healthcare professions, as there's a need now more than ever to diversify the healthcare profession in order to meet the needs of an ever-changing population. We conduct continuous research and quality improvement work to ensure that CASPER is as fair as possible to all applicants and not adding an additional hurdle for applicants from underrepresented groups. On this slide here, we talk about a research study that we conducted with New York Medical College in the States. Uh, I won't dive too deep into the specifics of this study. Um, we know there's a lot of information being thrown at you today, but overall we found that compared to traditional admissions tools like GPA, CASPER is a more equitable screening tool. So once our raters have rated your CASPER test, how does this information get to the schools that you're applying to? Uh, we guarantee a three week turnaround time for CASPER scores to be delivered to your schools after you write the test. Uh, this year we've actively been working to deliver a two week turnaround time, but three weeks is guaranteed. The most common question that we get at Altus is why don't you receive your CASPER score? Uh, currently, we do not distribute results to applicants because every program uses CASPER in a different way. Some use it in a formula with your GPA, some use a cutoff score. It's entirely up to the program to determine how CASPER is going to be factored into their decisions. The influence of the score also depends on the competitiveness of the applicant pool for each program. This means that the same CASPER score may be competitive for one program, but less competitive for another. Again, each program has the independence to use and interpret the score in whichever way they choose, just as they do when they're factoring in GPA and any other tools. The difference between GPA and the CASPER score is that programs make it public knowledge about how GPA and other cognitive measures factor into their admissions decisions, but they haven't done the same with CASPER. So at the moment, even if we did release your CASPER score to you, it wouldn't be clear how you should interpret how CASPER will influence your application. Finally, your CASPER score is a total numeric score that's not broken down by areas or topics covered. Uh, therefore, sharing this information with applicants would not provide any specific insights on how you can improve your score. So now that you guys know a bit more about how CASPER is rated and how your score gets distributed to your programs, I'm going to turn the webinar back over to Ian, who's going to talk to you about how you can prepare for your CASPER. Hi, Ian here. Hope you didn't forget about me. Um, now we're on to the good stuff, like how to actually prepare to take your CASPER test. Um, all, all right, so as CASPER becomes more widely used, the number of test prep companies has also increased. I just want to be clear, we are not affiliated with any test prep company, and because we know how expensive the application process is, we actually offer all the materials you need to prep for CASPER for free, um, you can access that on our takecasper.com website into the test prep section, or uh, we also offer a full 12 section practice test as part of your system requirements check, which can be accessed via your Casper account. Uh, I would highly encourage you guys to check out the 12 section practice test uh, prior to taking Casper. All right, so we know that taking a test in general is a stressful experience. So we have some tips here to make your testing experience as smooth as possible. Reserve your CASPER test at least three days in advance. Uh, make sure you have access to a computer with a webcam, microphone, and high-speed internet. These are all mandatory. Uh, ensure your computer can run the CASPER test by completing the CASPER system requirements check, and that's available via your CASPER account. I would advise running the system requirements check in the environment you plan on taking your test, as well as at the same time you plan on taking your test. So if you're gonna take CASPER at 5 p.m. on a Tuesday, uh, I would recommend running it 5 p.m. Uh, the Monday prior to your test, as well as before you take your test on the Tuesday. Uh, restart your computer the day of the test. This is just in case you have any pending updates in the background of your computer that you might not be aware of. And last but certainly not least, uh, chat with the live test support agents like myself before, during, and after Casper. These can be accessed via the live chat bubble in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. All right, next would be to familiarize yourself with the test format, and that's where that 12 section uh, practice test comes in handy. Again, that's inside your CASPER system requirements check. Um, the reason this is great is because the last thing you want is to uh, get a feeling of how quickly five minutes goes when you're taking your CASPER test. I would recommend taking that practice test a few times. It really lets you get a feel for exactly how long five minutes really is when you have to answer three questions as it relates to a scenario that you've just watched. 
And the best thing about this is, is preparation and practice can help reduce test anxiety, and that's always great. One of the benefits of an online test like Casper is that it can be taken almost anywhere. Uh, so go, uh, I would plan ahead uh, to ensure you're in a place free of distractions. If you live in a house with noisy roommates or, or family members, let them know you're going to need a quiet uh, space for the duration of the test. You can also arrange to take the test in a quieter location like your school or community library. If that is something that you're planning to do, I would advise running the system requirements check at that library or at that community center just to make sure that everything is going to run smoothly. Uh, we would also recommend using headphones. It helps you focus when taking Casper. We have had some applicants that have had issues with Bluetooth headphones, so we do not recommend the use of them. As with any test, read the questions fully, then plan your response. After the video or written scenario is presented, you'll be asked to respond to three open-ended questions within a five-minute window. You will feel pressed for time but make sure to read all three questions and take a moment to reflect and plan your responses. This will allow you to avoid repeating yourself as you move from question to question or missing a question completely. Consider all aspects of the dilemma presented to make sure you're covering the issue from as broad a perspective as possible. Lastly, please do not refer to previous scenarios when answering questions. Uh, like Heather touched on, each scenario is rated by a different rater. So referring to a previous scenario on a different scenario, the rater will, will, will not really know what you said on the previous scenario. All right, I highly encourage all applicants to use the five, full five minutes when responding to a section. Uh, if you finish your response before the five minutes is up, it's a really good idea to go back and check over your answers and see if there's anything more you can add, like on any test you've ever taken. Uh, the one big one is why you actually chose the stance you did. Raiders are looking for your motivations for taking a position rather than only the position itself. So it helps to explain your reasoning as completely as possible within the time given. We have found that individuals who use all full five minutes in responding uh, tend to score higher on Casper than students who move on to the next section before their time was up. If you end up running out of time while responding, don't worry, you're actually on the right track. Uh, and I would like to emphasize that spelling does not count. Uh, our raters are trained to ignore uh, spelling errors when answering, when uh, rating responses. All right. It, don't panic if you don't finish your thought. These, these two slides kind of build on each other. Um, if time does run out, like I said, don't panic. With a restricted amount of time to answer all three questions, it, it's quite common for time to run out while you're finishing your thought. You will automatically be moved on to the next section and your answers will automatically save. Uh, this happens to almost everyone and raters are used to seeing unfinished responses. The raters are also explicitly trained to ignore spelling issues, so focus on the content and explaining yourself instead of fixing grammar or typos. If you're disappointed in your response, don't worry. Just take a deep breath and try your best on the next section. Like I said before, each section is graded by a different rater who has no idea who you are or how you performed on the past section. Don't be concerned if you feel like your answers were particularly weak for one of the sections. You'll still have 11 other sections to reveal your true self. Use the few seconds in between each section and the 15 minute break in the middle of the test to collect your thoughts, calm your nerves, and reset your mind for the next section. All right, last but not least, these are some very important test day tech tips. Double check your Casper account information. This includes first and last name, uh, your application email, as well as the ID that you're required to enter in order to reserve your test. All of these pieces of information are going to be how the program matches your Casper score to your application. If any of these are different, it, they may have a, a tougher time matching your score. Perform the system requirements check. I think I've said this a few times, but I'm saying it again. Please make sure to perform this requirements check. Uh, check to ensure you have a working webcam and a high-speed internet connection, as well as a microphone. Again, these are all mandatory. Also make sure you're using the most up-to-date web browsers. So here we have Firefox and Google Chrome. These are the only supported browsers when taking Casper. If you try to take Casper with Safari, Internet Explorer, Edge, or any of the other browsers available, it will not work. Disable VPNs, firewalls, and plugins as these can impede your test day experience. Really important, know the date and time of your Casper test. Uh, please take into account uh, time differences depending on where you are living. All Casper, Casper times are in Eastern time. Uh, 
Uh, last but not least, remember that the refresh button is your friend. Uh, if you find that your video is pausing or buffering, uh, click refresh and more often than not, that will fix the issue. If you do encounter an issue on your Casper test that cannot be fixed by refreshing your screen, there is that live chat button in the bottom right hand corner. We have a full team on hand for every Casper test to ensure that all applicants can complete the test uh, as smoothly as possible. I'm going to pass it on over to Eric. Thanks so much for listening and best of luck on your Casper tests. All right, folks, we're just going to wrap up now, but I just wanted to summarize what we talked a little bit about today. Um, so I hope by now you know that Casper helps give to more and give a more holistic picture of you. Um, it increases diversity and access and it's evidence-based, but you now know how to prepare and maximize your success with Casper. Um, I am going to remind you that the webinar and uh, any questions that you posted um, will be answered by our team. Um, don't let that stop you just because the webinar is done doesn't mean that we're, you know, we're not answering questions anymore. Please connect with us at support at takecasper.com. You can use that chat bubble that Ian was chatting about. Um, reach out to us there. Last but not least, again, please provide us any feedback you might have. You know, we'd love to know how we can do a little bit better. But with that, I want to say thank you very much for joining us over your lunch hour. Um, I want to say good luck on all your applications. Um, and also, of course, good luck on your Casper test this season. Take care and all the best.